I'm wearing Oh my goodness. Yeah, are you yeah. Playing? yeah I, 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 I wear it like God, yeah, It is amazing the topic we're going to talk about today and the fact that the news is about Kavanaugh and I don't know who is coming out these days. I don't know what's, what's being said. There is, here's the latest I heard is we have the original professor who says that 36 years ago when we were children minors. We were minors. No. She's saying when we were children, not when we were children. <laughs> she says, quote, 36 years ago when we were children, we were at a party and he pinned me on the bed and put his hand over my mouth and tried to take my clothes off. And I pulled away and I ran. And she said that the other person that there were, first time she said it, she said there was four guys that did it to her and didn't give names. Now she said, and she said, the first time she said it was in 2012. Before that, she said, in fact, here's the weird part about it is, is that, yeah, it happened in 1982-ish, oh, ish, she doesn't know what year it happened. 81, 82, 83, I don't know. But she doesn't know what year, so, but right around that time. And, you know, frankly, there's times when people ask me stuff, and I go, I don't know, 2014, 15, I don't, right? I mean, the years, sometimes you don't remember. Yeah, but, but it's a traumatic experience. When you were 17 years old, you've got to make the count to know what year it was. Yeah. This, this time. It, she may have been 16. She may have been 18. I don't know. She's, but no, she was 15. She was 15, she said, right around 15. 14, 15, 16, something like that. So she said that that, that happened back then, but she did it. Here's, here's the weird part about this. Had you asked her about this in the year 2000, and said, hey, what do you think about Brett Kavanaugh? I think he'd be a great Supreme Court justice. She would have said, well, yeah. Why did you say that? Because she didn't remember. That's right. She had no idea that it happened. In 1984, she would have said that. 85, 86, 87, 80. Do I have to go through all of them? Yeah. No. Up until 2012, she said she had repressed memory. She didn't remember the event happened. And in 2012, she said, oh, now I remember when she was in therapy. And when she remembered in therapy, she said it was four guys that, that, that tried to rape her at a party. Then, then, then later, it was two guys, and she named them as Brett Kavanaugh and Mike Judge. So Brett Kavanaugh says, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. I was at no such party. I did no such action. I, it wasn't even though, like, you know, oh, no, I was trying to tickle her, and she misunderstood what was going on. <laughs> there was no explanation like that, right? It was, what the hell? No. I, I was, you know, I was asleep at home, or I was, who, what, I, uh, the answer is, which is what he said, is we don't know when, where, or how, or anything about the party, or, you know, so it's hard to, to refute it, right? So he says, no, but no such thing happened. They asked Mike Judge, what did he say? No question. So what the hell are you talking about? I've never been to that, a party like that. I never did that. I don't know what you're talking about. No such thing ever happened. So that's the one. The next one, a woman says, was it about this one? No, I was going to say, do you think because Donald Trump elected him to be in the office and people don't like Donald Trump and don't want his Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that they're paying his women? Obviously. Yeah, that's obviously what's going on. Why did they accuse the judge before them? I'm sorry? They, why didn't they accuse the judge before? Like he, because everybody knows who voted in, and this one, Donald Trump, is the one that put him in there. No. Who's they? The why didn't they accuse the judge before? <laughs> the women? <laughs> the women? <laughs> who is it? Who confirmed the secretary? No, but who did you mean? Why didn't they accuse? Who's they? No, no, no. I'm saying, people are saying that, like, all the Democrats are, you know, they um, saying that they're only doing it because he's in a well, yeah. service. Yeah. Why, why didn't those claims come out for the judge before as well then? What was his name? The other guy, the guy, um... Oh, the other, the other judge? Yeah. Oh, because, because it's, because it's, it was, it was, it was 5-4. It was five liberals and four conservatives. The, the liberals have owned the Supreme Court for 35 years. And he's a, he's a, he's a... So now it's going to be... That's why this one person, this one Supreme Court decision 
is way more important than all the, all the senators, congressmen, and presidential campaigns combined for the next 30 years. That's why. This is the most thing, important thing to the liberals in this country that's happening right now. But, so, so yes, that's exactly what's going on. But, so the, the second woman said that she was at a party, she doesn't remember when, where, of course, anything about the party, but that she remembers that he flashed himself to her at this party. She says she was super, super drunk and was blacking out and doesn't remember much about it and doesn't know for sure it was him, but thinks probably it was him. And the reason why she thinks it was him because she said at the time the guy flashed her, somebody screamed out, oh, look, Brett Kavanaugh is flashing and then said her name. Really? That's very specific that she was blacking We've all been to parties and somebody does something and someone says, oh, look, it's Stephen John Hansen. That's... <laughs> But, that, but that's why she said she remembers it was him. So, so, so that's the second one that came out. That one hasn't got because you can. You, that one hasn't gotten much mileage because people are like, okay, yeah, okay. And she also didn't remember that her whole life until now. The next one that came out is you know the the guy what's his name calls him the creepy porn lawyer. Uh, <laughs> which is like it's a funny nickname, it's just, which I think it's unfair because you know, as an attorney, I think, dude, you know, you don't, you have clients that, the, the guy that represents Stormy Daniels, um, uh, Stormy Daniels, no, Stormy Daniels, she's a she's a, an adult actress who had an affair with Trump. Oh. You guys didn't know this? Oh yeah, I did. Actually. Pay attention. Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> I'm sorry? What case? No, this, yeah, no, we're talking about Stormy Daniels. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump, Trump, Trump was Trump, right? Everybody knew what Trump was, just like everyone knew what Clinton was, right? Everyone voted for Clinton, and they knew who he was. He was the guy who lied and fooled around, and but it didn't matter because he was. We we liked him, and so we voted for him. Trump, we knew who he was. He was a guy who has married what, 17 times, 24 times? I'm kidding. It's, it's called hyperbole, you guys. He was married four times. He cheated on all of his wives. The guy was running, he was a billionaire playboy. What would you do with a billion bucks if you were a dude? That's what he did. Yeah, he, he lived the, whatever life you're thinking, ah, that's what he did. He was running around living that life as a billionaire playboy, not thinking I'm gonna be a politician anytime soon. And we all knew that and we said, who cares? When I say we all, America. So, because obviously not everyone voted for him, right? A lot of people didn't, but nevertheless. So, um, so it, the fact that he was having an affair with a porn star is like, okay, yeah, we knew that. Another porn star is going to come out, we're going to go, okay. Yeah. That, we knew that. He didn't, run as a, he didn't run as a choir boy. Now, had, had Mitt Romney had that issue, then we would go on, well, wait a second, what's going on? He ran as a choir boy. There's a difference. So... So, so the next one is the, the, the attorney for her, who people kind of say he's kind of this slimy, creepy guy, you know, because he's, 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 he's parlayed his representation of her into kind of this fame. He's always on all these shows, and he's, he's kind of a media whore, you know. He's like, hey, where's the camera? How's it going? But nevertheless, I, you know, I, I mean, as an attorney, I, re, I, I guess I respect the fact that he's getting paid to do his job, right? So um, he said, oh, I've got this new thing that's going to come out. Trust me, we were going to wait, we are wait. So he waited until today, and he just released it. It's an affidavit of this girl who says she went to 10 parties, all put on by Brett Kavanaugh and Judge. They, they did all these 10 parties, and that there were gang rapes at the parties that these guys put on, and that she was gang raped at the parties. Um, and she kept going, going for 10 parties. <laughs> wow. I haven't read the affidavit. I'm just hearing. I'm just telling you what I've heard on the news. So, so, <laughs> so that's where we are now. So my 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 question to you guys why did you keep going to ten parties? Is here we are. Here we are talking today about what? Where's your syllabus? Credibility of claims and sources. Do you see how I took my crystal ball as I was preparing the class? And I said, 
I think in six months from now, you made this happen. Brett Kavanaugh is going to be nominated, you're and I. You're all three well, women. You are all three. And I knew what was going to happen. What is going to happen? That these claims are going to come out, right? What are we talking about in class? Claims. This is a class of claims. What are these women making? Claims. Right? This class talks about the manipulation of claims and whether they're true and how to make good arguments using claims. That's what these women are doing. Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted me. These are horrible things, though. Why do you think that? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Why do you think that? First thing is, somebody makes a claim and says, Brett assaulted me. That's the conclusion. Somebody said, or that's the claim. Somebody says, Brett says, nah, nah, man. Didn't do it. She said, yeah, you did, no, I didn't, yeah, you did, no, I didn't. Why would you think I did? What? Just a second. As soon as they say, why do you think I did, is it up to him at this point in logic and in reason in our class to prove he didn't? Somebody makes a claim and she, he says, that's not true. Is it his burden at this point to prove her claim is not true? No. Do you see that? It's her claim. When somebody challenges it, it's her burden to provide other claims as a reason for believing her claim is true. That's called an argument. It's kind of like a PI claim in a sense, right? It's like criminal claim, PI claim, any sort of claim. And by the way, we're going to learn in one of the other classes, it's to, to make the other person prove your claim false is a fallacy. It's one of the fallacies that's in all of your textbooks. It's called misplacing the burden of proof. Whoever makes the claim has the burden of proof. You assaulted me. No, I didn't. Prove you didn't. Okay, let's look at that for a second. How do you prove you didn't do something? Well, I'll give you the evidence of the time and place of the supposed uh, incident. Okay, we don't know. I, I don't know what time or place. You can't prove it. I can't tell you when it happened or where it happened. Prove you didn't do it. Uh, all, all, we uh, all we know, we know four people that were there, right? She's named the four people that were there. So those four people. Okay, so that's how you're going to prove it. So if you find all the four people and they all say it didn't happen, is, is, have you disproved her claim? No. no. You gave evidence. That's right. You gave evidence. He found all four of those people. We've asked them. You know what they've all said? No. Never happened. No such party. We don't know what you're talking about. Is her claim now disproved? No. 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 It just makes it less likely, right? Now all of a sudden the burden, has he, has he proved himself innocent by just saying the four people there didn't say I didn't do it? Do you see how it's impossible to prove you didn't do something? It's much easier to prove something happened than something didn't happen. If somebody came up to you and said, I think you cheated on your last quiz, and you say, no, I didn't, prove you didn't. Uh, it kind of puts you on the spot, right? Um, right? Uh, well, uh, uh, okay. Um, how do you prove you didn't cheat? Prove you didn't cheat. I'm sorry? You could retake it, but what if you get a different score? Then I go, aha, see, you did cheat. No, what if I give you the same one? Are you sure you're going to get the same score? No. See what I mean? What if you happen to guess right on one of them and you guess wrong the next time? So, prove you didn't cheat. That would help, right? Retake it, but it doesn't prove you didn't. Other than retaking it, can you prove you didn't do something? No. Well, uh, the first thing you're going to say is, why, why would you think I cheated? What evidence do you have so that I can now address that? Did you see me looking down? Oh, because I was picking my, see, I've got a sore on my hand. And I, right? I mean, you would, you would try to connect whatever evidence you had. Oh, no, 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 I see why you think. Or, But short of that, this is why in logic and reason, we say, whoever makes the claim has the burden of proof. Once you 
outline your argument, then and only then is it the other side's burden then to say, okay, now that I see your elements, your, the, your, your uh, premises supporting your claim, I can address those, right? So that's what we have here. We have the woman saying he needs to prove his innocence. And we have a bunch of senators, this is what scares me the most, we have a bunch of senators, senators on the Democratic side, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you should be flipping out about this. We have senators who are Democrats who are saying, I believe her and I'm not going to vote for him because he hasn't proven his innocence. He has the burden to prove that. And the reason why that bothers me is because these are the people who do what? They write our laws. These are the people who write our criminal code in federal court. They write our laws. If they do not understand the basic concept of guilty until proven, or innocent until proven guilty, innocent until proven guilty, and the misplacing of the burden of proof, that scares the crap out of me that we have people up there who don't understand that basic principle. The, the reality is, I do believe they understand that. These are smart people. They understand that. They are just whores who are allowing themselves to shirk their true beliefs and understanding of the laws for political purposes. That bothers me. I don't like it when Republicans do it. I don't like it when Democrats do it. You need to be true to the principles. What about the fourth one? What did she say? I don't know the fourth one. Uh, only three. Yeah, there was only three that I know. Is there a fourth one? Um, can I, I don't want to kind of convey it to my job. So if, like, when someone has, like, the burden of proof, that would be kind of like when someone has a litigation case and then they're doing uh, interrogatories trying to prove that, okay, well, this happened because of this, this, and that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the interrogatories provide the evidence to support your claim, you know, the facts. So we have someone that says, he assaulted me. We have someone that says he did, oh, by the way, at these parties, these 10 parties, she says he passed out roofie or, you know, date rape drugs to the girls and got everyone drunk. And then all the guys would, would, would rape these girls with chain, or, you know, trains or something. And so that's, that's the allegation. So let's now jump into the class topic today, as the, this is the background. This is a great background, these claims. So the class today is on assessing the credibility of claims and sources. When we look at credibility, we have claims and we have sources, right? We have claims and we have sources. Those are the two ways we can look at a claim. A claim or, or uh, uh, when we assess credibility. There are two ways we look at credibility. We say we look at the claim itself and we can look at the source to assess the credibility. So here's the rules you need to know. When it comes to assessing the credibility of a claim, some claims are inherently lacking in credibility. Some claims are inherently lacking in credibility. And other claims, it depends on the source. Some claims are inherently lacking in credibility, and other claims, it depends on the source. So the same claim you'd hear and you go, well, I don't know if that's inherently lacking in credi credibility. I think that it depends on who says it. With sources, some sources are inherently unreliable. Some sources are inherently unreliable or presumed to be unreliable or presumed to be suspect. Some claims are inherently suspect while other claims, I'm sorry, while other sources are presumed 
to be reliable. Some sources are inherently reliable, I'm sorry, inherently unreliable or suspect, while other sources are presumed reliable. Some sources are inherently unreliable or suspect, other sources So like an example for that would be like, let's say they were all at this party, right? Let's, let's say it happened. So the source, the unreliable source would be like, you know, the drunk person that was there as opposed to the sober person that was there. Yeah. Let's say you have a police officer that says, I showed up to the party and here's what I saw. And then the other person says, oh, no, 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 no. I was there. I know for sure I was there. I remember because I just finished my 12th beer and after that I went over to the kitchen. I remember I slammed three shots of tequila and then I moseyed on to the back room after I did about 10 minutes of dancing and after I went back to the room here's what I saw. Well actually I tripped and fell a couple <laughs> you see how one source you go, that's presume or in inherently lacking in credibility, right? But like, as, they, as they progress, they're believing the porn star because she's famous and not the other girl because she's the porn star. The porn star not famous. It's like the same thing. She's saying. Really, at the end of the day, she came to the 10 parties that she knew this was going to happen, and she still went to all these 10 parties. Because the first time it happened, it wasn't enough. <laughs> wow. You can't say that. <laughs> why else would she go back 10 more times? Nine more times. You can't say why else she, would she go back. She, might, she didn't remember that it happened because it was a roofie thing. But of course, then how do you know now? Yeah. Just a minute. Give me a minute. I remember now. I don't know. No, these are, but these are all, these are, these are all the questions we ask, right? These are the questions everybody's going to ask. Some claims are inherently lacking in credibility. Some sources are inherently unreliable or suspect. Some sources are presumed reliable. Some claims, it depends on the source, and some claims are inherently lacking in credibility. So, Let's talk about some examples real quick, because that was some examples, but I'll give you some clearer ones. Let's say somebody comes into you and they say, or somebody comes here and they say, you know, or how about this? I say, I, I've got a, somebody I want to have speak to the class. And you say, oh, okay, it's a guest speaker. And I say, come on out here, Billy. And I open the door and an eight-year-old kid walks in. <laughs> little tiny kid, big blue eyes, toe head, and he says, hi everybody, and you go, hi Billy, <laughs> and then Billy says, I'm here to talk about ducks. <laughs> Do we have Billy come in? I like, wouldn't that be great if I really had a Billy? I like ducks. Ducks are feathery, and they're fun, and they like to swim. Ducks... <laughs> Ducks swim around ponds and lakes, and they have eggs in nests, and ducks have little ducklings, and they mate for life. And you go, oh, okay. And he says, thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. And you go, bye, Billy. And Billy scurries off. What do you think about Billy's claim Ducks mate for life. Mate, or mate? mate. They mate for life. They get married and they have little, you know, rice thrown at them and they stay together <laughs> as a couple for the rest of their life. <laughs> Not married, but you know, they stay together. So, what do you think about that claim? Is it a claim that is inherently lacking in credibility? Or is it one that you depend on the source? Is it that you hear it and you go, well, I don't, I don't know, do they? Right? Isn't that one of those things where you go, I, 
I, I know some. I know some animals do. I, do I, right? It's a claim that's not inherently lacking in credibility. It's a claim that depends on the source. If Billy said, "Hi guys, I like ducks," and ducks do this and on and on, same thing, and they mate for life, and ducks quack in Morse code and they talk to each other in Morse code and they've been sneaking in to your bedroom at night and watching you while you're asleep and talking to me about it. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you see how all of a sudden that changes? No now all of a sudden that's a claim that is inherently lacking in credibility. It doesn't matter the source, right? What if I said, just a second, thank you Billy, have a nice day, and then next I say I'd like to bring in another speaker. Uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Doctor. I'm sorry to offend you, Doctor. Come on in, Doctor Mallard. And Doctor Mallard comes in. <laughs> Doctor Mallard comes in and he says, "Hi, everybody. My name is Donald Mallard." <laughs> and uh, I have a PhD in zoology with an emphasis in duckology. <laughs> and I have been running the duck exhibit at the San Diego Zoo for 25 years. I have written several texts on ducks and I specialize in duck mating behavior. I've testified 20 <laughs> times in federal court regarding duck cases and duck mating habits. Wow. I'm cited by the UN regarding duck mating habits. Wow. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that ducks mate for life. I'm going to believe And then you guys go, okay, and he says, thank you very much. Okay. Have a good day. I'm and he leaves. He Is there a difference? Yeah. <laughs> you see the difference? Yeah. When Billy says ducks mate for life, you go, I, 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 is it true? When Dr. Donald Mallard says it, you go, <laughs> all right, ducks mate for life. <laughs> Do you... Some people would. That's not probably a reasonable thing to do, though. <laughs> Given. Oh, that he's a duck expert. <laughs> so, so the scenario I set up was too far-fetched. I was trying to set up a far, an extreme scenario to make a point, and I overdid it. So, but do, do you see my point? Yeah. Claims that are not inherently lacking in credibility, do you see how the source makes a difference? Yeah. Absolutely. Whereas, what if Dr. Mallard, after he got done saying all that, you'd go, wow, they must mate for life. And he said, and they quack in Morse code, <laughs> and I've been listening to them, and I found out they're trying to take over the world, and what they're doing is they're trying to build a bomb. <laughs> At that point, wouldn't you go, all right, Cuckoo! All of a sudden, he just collapsed. You see how, even though he's a duckologist, that claim is so ridiculous that it is inherently lacking in credibility. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Claims that are inherently lacking in credibility versus claims that it depends on the source. Yes? Where is that line drawn between like extreme and not extreme? I don't know. Depend on the person. Because it's like, yeah, what does that depend? So like, maybe yeah. some people... No, the, the, the point is we don't need to know that. You don't need to know that because as a critical thinker, your job is not to find out absolute truth. Your job is to assess credibility. Could you be wrong? Yeah, yeah. you could be wrong. Relying on a duckologist regarding duck behavior. By the way, ducks don't mate for life. Has anybody ever seen ducks mate? No. <laughs> They're horrible, horrible animals. They gang rape. They, they go to parties by <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> they are horrible animals. <laughs> and they're taking over the government. No, they, they're, yeah. We used to go down and watch ducks, and I'm like, oh, chase after him. Stop, leave her alone. <laughs> so, no, they don't mate for life. But, it, but it's one of those things where you go, yeah, okay, they could, right? So, <laughs> so, claims and sources. Some sources are inherently unreliable. 
You find somebody who's been convicted of perjury, felony theft, felony forgery, you know, lying under oath a bunch of times, and then you go, oh, and then he's going to tell you something. Well, wait a second, I don't know. Is that somebody who is inherently lacking in credibility? He is somebody who would be inherently suspect, right? I believe so. What about somebody who, let's say, does it, here, how about this question? Does it matter if the women who are making these allegations are liberal Democrats or not? When it comes to the, what you put on the board, those numbers, yeah. That would be yeah. five, four. Yeah. Because right now, the first thing when I was talking about, when I was talking about the claims, you see how the claims are genuinely, inherently lacking in credibility, the way they are now. If somebody came up to you and said, about 36 years ago, I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know who, I don't know where I, this, I think this happened, I didn't remember it until 30 years later, and you'd go, okay, when you, when you get those details figured out, come talk to me. That's inherent. Not a single police officer on earth would go, oh, just a second, let me go figure out. They'd go, okay, when you figure that out, let me know. That's inherently lacking in credibility at that point. Mm -hmm. But now what if she said, well, it happened at this time, at this place, these people, there was a party. There, the, the guy says, oh, no, we were tickling her, and she was laughing. Now all of a sudden you go, okay, well, wait a second. Now we have a disagreement as to whether you were trying to sexually assault her or whether you were tickling her. You, you see the difference? Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in these claims, right? So, so we're, we're talking about this now versus the, 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 the sources is a whole different situation. When, just a second. When it comes to sources, bias makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely bias makes a difference. If you were to ask, remember the very first day, we were one of the first days I was talking about me being better looking than Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> and I said, what would his mother say? Yep. No. His mother would say, <laughs> poor Shaquille. Nah. No, his mother would say, yes. Are you kidding? My son's a handsome man. What would my mom say? In fact, I saw my mom earlier today. And she gave me a hug. And she goes, oh, hi, sweetie. She goes, you're such a handsome man. And I go, mom, I use you as an example all the time when you say that. <laughs> I said, thank you very much. But you're my mother, right? If you ask my mother, what is she going to say? Every mother thinks that their kid is good looking, right? It doesn't matter. She's biased. Your son could be missing a nose and a, and a, and a mouth, and your mother's going to go, the most attractive guy in the... doesn't matter, right? <laughs> you can't miss a mouth, can you? Yeah. <laughs> My point is still valid, though. <laughs> Parents are biased. Does it matter if they're Democrats? It does. Why? Because there's motive to lie, right? Yeah. When you're looking for a motive... I wasn't at the scene of the crime, okay? Where were you? I was at home with my mother. She can testify. Okay, it helps, but not a lot because she's motivated to lie, right? Yes? So, I mean, what, what you were saying earlier is that if a police officer, yeah, if a, that woman were to go to a police officer and like, well, I don't really remember, I think this happened, there, there, um, because she didn't have like a time a place they can't check it for sure and when that there so it would have to be factual in order for them to you know take interest well yeah there would have to be something that they could do to, mm -hmm. to verify it okay. the only thing they could do is to talk to the witnesses who all say it didn't happen okay so then what do you do if you were the investigator what could you do you can't do anything, can't do anything. the only people that were there say I wasn't there and it didn't happen. So where do you go from there? Are you sure you didn't do it? Oh, damn it, I taught him when he wasn't paying attention. Oh, yeah, I did it. Right? I, I, there's not much you can do. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're talking about, let's, let's talk about uh, opinions. Not all sources are equal. 
Talking about sources, not all sources are equal. Remember we talked about there's bias that plays a role. But remember when I introduced to you to Mr. Mallard? Do you see how Mr. Mallard versus Billy, the sources, why was he, Mr. Mallard, more reliable than Billy? All of those things. You see all those things that I set up? You see how they make a difference? His age, his experience, his education, his training, his background, his job, the fact that other people have relied on him, the fact that he is coincidentally named Mallard, and Donald. and Donald at the same time. <laughs> Those things make a difference. And when I go to court and when I put somebody on the stand, I try to build up their credibility by doing those things. And when somebody else is on the stand, I try to break down their credibility because source credibility matters. We have expert witnesses that I have to prove to the court are experts in the field. That stuff matters. Do it, are all opinions equal? And the answer is, hell no. All opinions are not equal. What's the best band? Anybody know what the best band is? Rock band? Uh, I think what would you say? Aerosmith. Aerosmith? What is it? There you go. Done. <laughs> oh, come on. Dean, who's the best band? Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> Are all opinions equal in that? What if somebody says, oh, no, no, I think, what's another, what's a, what's a, what's a crappy band? What's a crappy band? Uh, Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, so what if somebody said Nickelback, right? Somebody goes, oh, they were the, they're the best band. You go, oh, okay, you like them. They, 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 they play good music, right? Okay. But are they, are they, could you arguably say they're the best band? No. No, and why not? Popular opinion. <laughs> yeah, right. Popular Is it just opinion? No, it goes against how many awards they won, too. There's stuff that goes into opinions, right? Yes. We all agree that opinions make a difference based on who you are. Yes? Definition of best. And that's what we'd have to we'd have to outline that criteria, right? Yeah. Is it is it just who sold the most records? And it wouldn't be that. It would be it would be a combination of a lot of things. You'd have to say outline what that is, but you know uh, how creative they were and how much they changed music and how you know and so yeah. You, I mean, there's there, there's what three three bands at the top that everyone puts at the top. You have the Beatles, you have Led Zeppelin, and you have uh, uh, the Stones. Thank you. Those are the three that everyone puts at the top three. So uh, everyone battles between those three bands. Between, but anybody outside of that, yeah, they're you know, what about the Who? Yeah, but they're not one of these three. These three, everybody agrees. All the critics agree. Well, what are critics? Why do we listen to critics? They're experts. You see how they're different? They're experts. Why are they experts? Because they've done it for they, years, they, they're trained. They know more than you do about music, about bands, and about the subject matter. Right. We, when you watch, how many people watch the Food Network and watch those food shows? Don't we love them? <laughs> love them, right? And people, people make up a lasagna, and what do they do when they're done? Did they do a good job? I don't know. We don't know until what? Right. You give it to the judges, and you take it over to the judge, and you go, oh, please. Oh, please. And you hand it to somebody, and somebody goes, <coughs> Ramsey throws it in your face, right? And he goes, oh, too much salt. Why did you choose? And they go, oh, I shouldn't have. I, I was one minute too late. And you're like, really? How do you tell these things, right? The cumin is just one shake too much. What? That's all How do they know that stuff? They're experts in the field. Right? That's how you, we all agree. Okay, we agree. Does that mean that that food is better? Yes. <laughs> it is better. Why? Because we all agree that experts who know more about it can tell us that. Yes? In terms of being an expert, wasn't there something where they would have to eat a food and list every ingredient that was in there? Yeah. 
yeah, they, these guys can do that sort of thing. They are experts in food. They cook food. They eat food. They, they grow food. They, I mean, these people know it. Just like whatever, whatever your thing is, everybody's got a thing, right? Whether it's all the guys who are going, yeah, video games. I'm just <laughs> amazing at yeah. Whatever your thing is in life that you're an expert at, have you ever talked to somebody who dabbles in it? Yeah. And they go, and they go, oh, yeah, and then they say something that's, you go, oh, they don't know what they're talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, they're ignorant in this topic. And then you, you go, yeah, I, I see why you would say that, but if you really knew the subject matter like I do, you would see the difference. Remember I told you about faces and stop being able to tell people apart. When you're an expert at black people, Mexican people, Chinese people, white people, you can tell the difference when you're not and you first look and you're like, what the hell, all these Chinese people look alike. And then you go to China, you live there for 10 years and you go, oh hell no, they don't look alike at all. When you're an expert in the field through experience, you see those subtle differences and those subtle distinctions that the ignorant people do not. All opinions are not equal. So when somebody says, oh yeah, let's go out to dinner. Well, where do you want to go? Let's go to McDonald's. You like McDonald's burgers? Oh, they're the best burgers. No, no, they're not. What do you mean they're not? Oh, we can just disagree. No, we can't. They suck. They are horrible burgers. Not a single person on earth has ever said that that's the best burger. Kids like it. Billy likes it. <laughs> Who sells the most burgers? McDonald's. So if you go by just consumption, what would we say? It's got to be the best. No. Just because people are idiots and they don't know what's good doesn't make a McDonald's burger good. Do you see that? Yeah. Just because people buy music doesn't make it good music. Just sure. because you do a poll out there and say, do you believe Brett Kavanaugh? Do you believe the accuser? Does that make it true? No. P the general public's opinions of things is totally irrelevant when it comes to claims and sources, credibility and truth. Do you see that? Yes. Couldn't you say the same thing about a for food? No, you're talking about fine distinction. You're not going to find that. You're talking about fine distinctions between the highest levels. It's like those three bands, right? You're going to find critics that go, it's clearly Zeppelin. How do you have Bonham on, in, a, in a band and not have it the greatest band of all time? You can't, right? Or someone's going to go, no, no, it's the Stones. Are you kidding? Or whatever, for whatever reason, the Beatles changed music. How do, you, how do you refute the fact that it's the Beatles? Well, because and everybody has their reasons. You can argue between those three or maybe even four if you want to add, I don't know, some, some other band in there. What? Queen. Queen no, hell no. Queen's, not, <laughs> Queen's a great band, but no one's going to say that they're at the top. So, so you see what I'm saying? We're going to have disagreements among the critics, but they're all going to agree at the top. 10 or the top five or whatever it is, right? So, so, so that's, that's what we're talking about when it comes to opinions. Opinions, it depends, on, there's a lot of things that we look at. We look at all of those things, but then at the end we look at credibility that's dependent on your bias. And this is why in court we have to ask people, do you have any ownership in this? What is your relationship to these parties? We want to know these things. Does it matter? Yes. Because we, number one, we see what we're looking for. It's, it's interesting, when O.J. Simpson was being charged with murder, and they polled the African American community, and they said, you, you watched the trial, those who watched the, what was going on, what do you think? I don't think he's guilty. And they took a poll of the white people watching, and they said, what do you think? And they said, I think he's guilty. What does that show? That shows bias. Does it mean that somebody is, is lying and cheating and stealing in their opinions? No. It means that we see what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Our bias makes us look for stuff that feeds our opinion and we ignore stuff that goes against our opinion. That goes, so that's why the very first day I told you I'm biased. You guys see my bias. I don't hide it, right? You guys know what my bias is, that's fine. As long as you guys understand that I know I have a bias and you guys know what it is, that's fine. But realize you all have a bias and when you see these things, 
you can't help but see what you're looking for. Does it matter whether you've been sexually assaulted as when you were younger in this? Absolutely. Does it matter if you were falsely accused of sexual assault? Absolutely. These are all things that would, could bias your opinion on the, this claim. If, let's say you wanted to build a big pond in your backyard and put ducks in, and there was some testimony about it, wouldn't you want the guy, when you're listening to it, wouldn't you listen to the, all the testimony and go, oh, the guy that's, whose opinion says we should build this is the guy that said everything right? Absolutely. What's amazing is when the Democrats and the Republicans talk about the debates, they all think their guy won. Because whenever their guy screwed up, they go, no, that wasn't a big deal, that wasn't a big deal. And whenever the other guy screwed up, they went, aha! <laughs> you see what you're looking for. So bias is very important. Okay. Education, experience, all those things come play in. Okay. Next one, it is reasonable, you guys need to write this down and learn it, live it, love it. It is reasonable to be suspicious of a claim that lacks credibility inherently. It's reasonable to be suspicious of a claim that lacks credibility inherently. Or if the claim comes from a source that lacks credibility. It's reasonable to be suspicious of a claim that lacks credibility inherently, or if it comes from a bias source, a source that lacks credibility. It's reasonable be, to be suspicious of a claim that lacks credibility inherently, or if it comes from a source that lacks credibility, typically a biased source, or one that's, you know, like we said, a liar, a known liar. Typically those are the two things that make your source inherently lacking in credibility. Okay, <laughs> We're going to talk about that. A claim lacks inherent credibility, a claim lacks inherent credibility to the extent it conflicts with what we observe, what we think we know to be true, and other credible claims. This is important. A claim lacks credibility, inherent credibility, to the extent it conflicts with those things that we know to be true. Our experiences, our observations, Claims from other credible sources. A claim lacks credibility inherently to the extent it conflicts with what we know to be true. Those are the things that we observe and things that come from other credible sources, other sources that we know to be credible. So let's say your dad has always told you stuff and everything your dad has always told you has been true. He's a very reliable source based on what he's told you, and then in life you see, oh my gosh, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. Is he somebody that is inherently reliable, credible? Yes. Right? So if your dad has said something over and over again, and then somebody says something that goes against that, somebody says, oh no, this is true, and you go, wait a second, my dad has told me that different thing. Do you see how you go, wait, your initial thought is what? I'm suspicious of that, right? Because it goes against my background information. It goes against the things that I know to be true through my life. Does it mean it's wrong? No. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that it's reasonable for us to be suspicious of that claim. So you guys need to know what background information is. Background information is those things I just listed. Those things you have seen in your life to be true, your own experiences that have been true, claims from other sources, from other credible sources that have been true. And what we do is we gather those things up in our life and we have this, this, this file cabinet in our brain, like this file cabinet over here, right? And in our brain we have a file cabinet and it's listed with all of those things that we filed away 
credible sources, people that have been credible to us, claims that have been made that have come true, and we start compiling them, we start putting together our worldview of truth, things that we believe are true. Somebody says something, and we immediately, as soon as they say it, we go, just a second, we go, okay, that's good, it checks out. Somebody says something else, we say, just a second, okay, that checks out. Somebody says something else, you go, just a second, oh, ha, 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 that doesn't check out. It's the BS test, right? Somebody says something, and what do you do? You go, what? No. As soon as you do that, what's happened internally is your brain has said, that conflicts with my background information. What was the list? All the things I mentioned before. Your personal experiences. What else did I say? Sources. What we've heard. Reliable sources, what you've seen and heard in your own life. All those things you know to be true. Your background information. What you've observed, what you know to be true, and what other claims have been made from, from reliable sources. This is why when the news media tells us something over and over and over, and after we hear it 20 times, what do we start believing? It's true. Hitler understood this. And so this is what he would do. He would say, we just tell a lie, tell it big, and repeat it over and over and over and over, and eventually people will believe it. Because it becomes part of your background information. And as soon as somebody says it, you go, just a second, oh yeah, that fits. So this is why as critical thinkers, we need to be very careful the first time we hear something to turn around and go, wait a minute. Question everything first, because if you let it get by the first time, the second time, the third time, eventually it gets into your file cabinet, and you go, that sounds right. Wait, wait, torturing and killing Jews? Just a second. Perfectly fine. How did that happen? How did we have a country where it was okay to torture and kill Jews? Crazy, isn't it? Yet, Nazi Germany, right? Was that, was that yeah, subliminal messages? Yeah, it, was just, it wasn't even subliminal, it was just outright. Is that like subliminal things like that? It can be, yes. Sometimes sometimes they're, you know, kind of hidden. Wasn't he a Jew as well, like his father's? Or yeah, he was like 116th or 8th or whatever, I don't know. I mean, it, but that's more of just kind of an irony. It happens a lot of times where you have people who are self-loathing. Yeah. Okay, assessing the content of a claim. Let's talk about assessing the content of a claim. We are under the misconception that credibility and truth comes from our senses. We're under the misconception that credibility and truth comes best from, best from our senses. Don't we? Remember the story of Doubting Thomas? How many people want to say Doubting Thomas know what I'm talking about? Court justice, right? The one you talked wow. about. Wow. That's interesting. Not a single person has heard of Doubting Thomas. I got a friend named Thomas. <laughs> You're close. You're very close. But it's not that. Is it Doubting so is that? somebody? Or is it doubting Thomas is a guy who left his cell phone on in class. No. It's a it's a Bible story. That that truth that truth comes from or credibility and truth come from our senses, our five senses. Sight, sound, taste, touch hearing, that, that that is how we gain credibility and truth, or assess credibility and truth, is if we can taste it, touch it, hear it, feel it, smell it, right? We can experience it, and then we know it's true. And there was a story in the New Testament. Jesus dies, and he rises from the tomb and goes off. And some people go over to the tomb, and the tomb is empty, and they go, where is he? And an angel there says, he's risen and he's gone. 
And they go, oh my gosh. And then some of the apostles see him later, and they talk to him. And they go out and they tell people, Jesus rose from the dead. And they tell the other apostles, and everyone goes, oh yeah, he said he would, yay. And Thomas, one of the apostles, says, <laughs> yeah, he did what? He, he did what? Yeah, he rose from the dead. You're telling me, just a minute, let me turn around to my background information. And he turned around, and he pulled up, he said, dead people are always dead. Dead people rot. Dead people don't walk around and talk. And he turns around and he goes, I doubt that very much. I check my background information, the things that I know to be true, all the evidence that I've seen in my life, and everything tells me that you guys are full of malarkey. There's no way he's alive. He doubted, and so Christ comes to him in the story, in the, in the New Testament, and he says, feel. And Thomas feels his hands and talks to him, and then he kneels down and he cries and says, I'm sorry for doubting. So the phrase doubting Thomas became a very popular thing for thousands of years, and apparently yep. last Friday it now is gone. Yep. <laughs> a doubting Thomas. People would always be called a doubting Thomas when you just go, nah, and you go, stop being such a doubting Thomas. Yep. That was That's used better. all the time growing up. I heard that a million times in my life. No. And no one's ever heard that. No. Okay. And like I said, Friday it ended. So it's like my great grandmother used to she used to always go, uh, great grandma uh, Isla Einstein, she'd always go, she would say, my, my, is it my lands? My lands. Oh, lands. And I'm like, what does lands have to do with anything? But still no one uses it anymore, but apparently it was big in the turn of the century of the 1800s. <laughs> so when I say turn of the century, I've got to be careful because there's been another one since then. So what was I talking about? Doubting? Senses. I'm talking about the senses. We seem to think that our senses are the be-all and end-all of truth and gathering credibility. And what have I shown you? I've shown you that our senses aren't that. They can be lied. They can be tricked. They can be manipulated. When I showed you the arrow, what you see may or may not be true. Right? Mm -hmm. So in court we have eyewitness testimony. People think eyewitness testimony is very important and very valid and strong. The reality is eyewitness testimony is, is wrong way too often. I'll tell you a, a study that, because I, I did my master's uh, work in criminal justice, and there was a study where they were ch checking eyewitness testimony and how valid it is. And they set this up where they had these people, they were walking with them and they're talking, and they had a scene set up in an alley where they have a body lay covered with blood on the ground, and a guy is leaning over with a knife covered in blood, and he's just leaning over the body on the ground, and he's got the knife up, and they walk around the corner talking, and they go, <gasps> and they see the guy sitting there, he looks up at the people and he goes, <gasps> and he drops the knife and he runs. They're, they're him. All he does is he, he's holding the knife, he's leaning over the body, he sees him, drops the knife, and he runs. And then they go, oh, the person freaks out, and they, go, ah, and they go, oh, it's okay, come over here, come over here. And they go, what did you see? What did you see? You know what everybody said they saw? I saw a man stabbing that person. They all said they saw him stabbing, and none of the time was he stabbing. It's possible, and this was all set up, but isn't it possible somebody sees a body with a knife in it, and he goes up, and he checks, and the pulse, and he goes, oh my gosh, and like an idiot, takes the knife out, thinking I'll help the person by getting this, this knife out of them, takes it, and just as he pulls the knife out, they turn the corner. Could that be the case? Yes. This person goes to prison the rest of his life for first-degree murder because you swore on a stack of Bibles that you saw him plunging the knife repeatedly into this person. You know why? Because our brain lies to us. It all the time fills in the blanks. It says, this is what you saw, but what you really saw was, and it fills in the blanks. There's tons of studies on this about how the mind works, how the eyes work. It's just like when you stand in front of a, a, a screen in a window 
and you look out the screen, do you see the screen? If you're looking out across the street, if you're looking at the screen and you're focus in, but if you focus out across the street, you don't see it at all, right? You can see right through it like the screen's not there. And you realize it's blocking 50% of your view. How is that possible? You know how it's possible? Your brain fills in the gaps. It's a crazy phenomenon. So when we rely on our senses, what we hear and what we smell and what we taste and what we see, you got to realize that is inherently questionable. Never rely on that only. Scientific evidence is way more valuable. Fingerprint, DNA, skin tests, those types of things are much less faulty, much more reliable. Because when you're filtering it through the human being and the human brain, we fill in the gaps both with our biases, because does it matter whether the guy leaning over was black, white, Hispanic, Asian? Yeah, it matters, because it matters on the bias of the person looking. Because we all know what those Asians are like. We all know what those Mexicans are like. We all know what those whites or black, whatever your bias is, right? It matters because you see what you're looking for as an eyewitness. So that's one of those types of things where you need in context, right? Yeah. It reminds me of the 12 Angry Men. Perfect. The movie. With the lady. By the way, the original one is so much better than the remake. Oh, that's not a movie about the, them uh, trying to... The 12 Angry Men. Where the lady, the lady's looking through the window, but she yeah. doesn't have her glasses on. And yeah. she says she swears she saw it. I swear I saw it. I heard this. I heard that. They, what did they see? They saw a young, poor kid who had a knife. Okay, I know. I I know that he's guilty. Then. I think one of the guys even said that. He's like, we know. The yeah, we know. We know their type. Yeah. yeah. Just the last one is wishful thinking. We there's a lot of times we have we have what's called wishful thinking, the way things ought to be in our mind, and amazingly we see things the way they ought to be. It would be nice if, and then we see it that way. It would be nice if my son were kind to his girlfriend. And so when you see him interact with his girlfriend, what do you see? I see the, I see the niceness. And you ignore when he screams and punches her. <laughs> right? Here's, here's the other thing, too, the other example of this on that same topic. Every time you're in a brand new relationship, don't you have wishful thinking? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is wonderful. This is great. This is going to be perfect. He is so perfect for me. And what do you ignore? Everything, else. Everything that's bad. All the red flags. And you go to your friends and family, and what do they try to tell you? All the red flags. They say, um, yeah, I know you really like him, but the fact that he punches you in the face, <laughs> I think, I don't know, may be a bad thing. The fact that he, the fact that he, whatever, and they outline it, and what do you do? You get mad. How dare you? You don't understand the love that I have, that we, we love each other, and you only see the positive in the relationship. And every, the, but he brought me roses afterwards. It's perfectly fine. They match my blood and everything. Yes, red like that in my blood. <laughs> and you ignore all of that until, until what happens? Until you get sick of him. And then what do you see? Oh, you're sitting across from him and the way he chews his damn food, the way the whistle in his nose whistles when he breathes, it changes, right? And then you go, how come I didn't see all of those things before? Your bias changes. You see what you want to see. I see it all the time in divorce. I, and I don't, I don't use this to make light of abusing people, obviously. I use it just as an extreme example because it's easier to see extreme examples. But we see what we want to and we ignore stuff, even when it's blatant and obvious, right? 
So remember that as a critical thinker. And it's when it comes to assessing the credibility. Let's talk now about what this gentleman was talking about. Sources. Where do we get our information from? Where do we get our truths from? The things we believe are true. Where do our truths come from? Parents, research. Parents, research? Media. Media? So when you say research, who does the research? Do you do the research? No, no you don't. Somebody else does the research, right? Somebody, so where do you get your information from? Somebody does the research, and how do you know about your research? Google? You Google, and what do you get in Google? Does Google tell you anything? No, Google sends you to different, to different sources. Where do you get your information? It's not from Google. It's not from the research. Where do you get your information? From others. That's right. Do you see how we get our information from others? How do I know about Brett Kavanaugh and what's going on? Yeah, the news. I haven't talked to Brett. I haven't talked to the woman making the claim. All I know is what somebody told me they heard from somebody else who heard it from somebody else who didn't, right? I mean, all, that's all the information we have. Your textbook, the things that we're learning in our textbook. How do you know about this information? Somebody told you. How do they know it? How does Parker and Moore know this stuff? Did they do the independent research on this stuff? No. Hell no. Sorry, Parker and Moore, if you're watching. No, you didn't do the independent research. You learned it, Parker and Moore, from your professor, like me. And you know who they learned it from? Yeah. Their professor, who learned it from their professor. And eventually, some professor somewhere did some research. But what I've noticed is we just regurgitate what our professors tell us, and as critical thinkers, we need to stop doing that. We need to question that, question everything, and especially me and your professors. The only reason we know this stuff supposedly is because some other old dude told us, right? Somebody could be wrong in this whole thing. So we get our information from others. Most of our information comes from two sources education and media. Right? Yes. We're sitting right now and you're getting information. Textbooks, yes. school, the stuff you think you know, you got it from one of these two things, most likely. And if you got it from some friends or family, guess where they got it from? One of these two things, most likely original source of information, those few nerdy people that are actually sitting there with the microscope figuring stuff out, those are rare individuals. And then they report it and nobody can understand it, and somebody else has to read it and go, yeah, I think what they mean is, uh, let me see if I can translate this into layman's, layman's terms because I don't really understand it myself. Education and media are the two main sources that we get our information from. Are they biased? Yes. Everybody's biased. So what happens is, these are the two funnels through which information goes. Media and education. Goes through these funnels, hits media, education, goes back out, and they're, they're, they're the education, or the, the, the knowledge, or truth funnels, the things we believe to be true. So what happens when everything we hear is biased? It changes our background information, doesn't it? The things we believe to be true. Remember I was talking about Nazi Germany? You go to talk to people over in the Middle East, and you, and you ask them, several people have done surveys over there, what do you think about bombing of the World Trade Centers in, in America. Think that was a good thing? Is it justified? Huge pr proportion of them say, in the Middle East, say, oh yeah, perfectly fine. That was fine. That was a good thing to do. They deserved it. Why? Do they really think that? Or have their background information been so deluged with their sources 
that it becomes their background information. Yeah, that's probably what's going on. If they really thought about it, do you really think it's okay to harm somebody because they harmed you? Two wrongs make a right? Is that really the justification? Because that's their justification. Two wrongs make a right. No, it's not, it's not right to do that. It feels good sometimes, but it's not right. So let's talk about those sources. And the reason why I'm going to talk about this is because as, in, as, as critical thinkers, you need to know where the bias is coming from and what it is, right? How is education biased? Anybody? Yes? Is a teacher can be biased from what they tell you or teach it? The teacher's own personal, oops. How are teachers' opinions biased? Whatever they think, and that's it. It's shown a lot when you write a newspaper, or like you write a newspaper on a topic of controversy. Yeah. Like yeah, if you do it. If a teacher has a specific opinion, they're going to grade you. Sometimes they grade you based on. If you disagree with their opinion. Yeah. Why? Because they see what they're looking for. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. They see the flaws in the other side's argument more than they see the flaws in their own argument. And so they're more critical when you disagree with your teacher. You may be writer in your writing, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because the teacher is going to see the wrongness more than the rightness in your writing. <laughs> So, teachers' opinions, their opinions can, yes? I was going to say another uh, bias, or another example, mm -hmm. that it would be textbooks. Uh, they, yeah. They only show you what uh, the positives, like all the positives, and they glorify it, and then the negatives, they kind of like wash them. Here's the problem. You have a history book that's about this big, right? All of history is about one page. I'm sorry? See what I'm saying? Somebody has to edit and choose what's important about what happened, and then they have to interpret it. How they interpret it, remember I was talking about the greatest president that has ever lived? Who was it? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Everybody has always told me, every teacher that I've ever had growing up, Roosevelt was the greatest president of all time. And to some degree, isn't that what you were, you were taught? Yeah. And I remember talking to my father one day about that. I came back home and I was like, oh, I got to do a paper on Roosevelt. And my dad said, oh my gosh, he did more to destroy our country than any other president. And I went, oh, what? You don't know what you're talking about. Just because you lived through it doesn't mean. You looked at your phone, Kenny? Yeah, I turned around and I went, just a second. My teachers say. So I said, what? What are you talking about? So we, we talked about it, and I was like, oh. And I, I all of a sudden had somebody who was a source of information who had been, in the past, reliable to me, giving me information that was reliable. So now I've got a conflict. I've got a teacher that I'm supposed to trust and a father. Guess who won? My dad wins, of course, right? Not always, but everyone's different. So I, I went and I challenged and I wrote a paper that said, wait a second, I, you know, and what did the teacher do? Graded it harshly, right? So teachers, not only do they have their own biases based on what they were taught and what they were taught and so on, all they do is regurgitate what they were taught, but also their opinions can be based on their own financial interest. Right? They work for the government. You're going to find teachers are more inclined to be pro-government on things, typically. Um, textbooks, we were talking about, there's only a finite amount of space and you've got to fill it with an infinite amount of information. And so you have people like, well, we could talk about this president or this president, let's choose, and that your bias, the historians decide what you know. What happened in World War II? Were you there? 
No. You only know what happened based on what somebody's told you what happened. What if they're lying? In fact, who is it that famously said that? The victor writes the history books. You can just change history. When you win the war, you just change the history books and it happened the way you say it happened. Yes? The uh, bias I love the most is for something in college that I've been told about nine billion times that you can't be successful without a college education. So then they get paid for it. What have I told you? I didn't say you. Oh, have I? No, no, I'm saying, have I said anything about this? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Then just real quick. Just real quick, because usually I talk to class about that. <laughs> there are so many times when I think I'm being recorded. So, <laughs> when it comes to education, when it comes to education, remember this, and I will deny it if you say I said it. <laughs> no, I won't actually. Um, be very careful with your education because the biggest lie in the last 50 years has been everybody needs to get a college degree. I hear it from everybody. When I go, when the kids, when our kids were in high school, I'd go there and the, the teachers would say, by a show of hands, how many people are going to college? And someone would raise their hand and Johnny, why aren't you raising your hand? Why, and since I say it's peer pressure and pressure to, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. Everybody has to go to college, right? And it's kind of like this, and, and, I, and I would think to myself, why? Why does everybody have to go to college? Everybody's going to college right now because for the last 30, 40, 50 years, people have been saying more and more, especially the last 10, 20 years, you have to go to college. If you're a responsible human being, you have to get a college degree. Guess what we're, we're facing now? We are facing a serious financial problem because student loans are so friggin' expensive. And what, here's what's happening. People get out of high school, they get a job working at TJ Maxx, making 10 bucks an hour, and they say, you know what, I'm not getting anywhere very fast here, and they go, I'm gonna go get a college degree. And they go to college, and they get to college and they take, uh, they get a degree in English or sociology or Elizabethan poetry <laughs> or Russian, <laughs> Russian history or philosophy. Or pre-law, or physiology, or I mean, name the degree, right? What degree works? Very few is the answer. And then you get, and then they get done and they go, Phew, I'm going to be so much more marketable. And they go out there and they go, let's see, philosopher, they look in the, well, actually, they don't have papers anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I was looking in a paper. See, in the old days, we used to have these things called newspapers. What's that? I know. So they go online and they go, let's see, topic P, P philosopher. Oh, no, actually, they would say F. Oh, that's right. <laughs> P, philosopher. And they go, let's see, no philosophers. Uh, let's see, now what do I do? Uh, and they go back to Cindy at TJ Maxx and they get their old job back and now they have $400 a month student loan payments on top of the $10 an hour that they were making before but at least they have their degree. Mm -hmm. So I tell you this just, not, I'm not discouraging you from getting an education. I think an education is a very important thing to do but, and I think most people are here because you want to make more money. I'm just saying be very careful because it doesn't always translate into more money. Please pay for your education and don't borrow for your education. And if you're going to get a degree, get a degree in something that you know is going to translate into, into a job, not something where you're going to have to, like a philosophy degree, where you're going to have to go to law school after that if you don't want to go to law school. Most degrees now you have to go to a graduate school to make it worthwhile. If you're looking for something in education to make money, there are other ways to do that. Plumbers and electricians and and carpenters and things like that, those people make damn good money for a lot less education. So um, I, just, I just warn you, and I'm here teaching, and I am somebody that went on, I have a doctorate, so I, I, I've been through the process. And, and I'm just telling you, it's not for everybody. It used to be, if you want to be a professional, then you go to college. If no, if not, then don't. And now it's everybody needs to go, that's going to be the next bailout. 
mark my words, the Democrats are going to be running, if not this election, the one after it, and they're going to be saying, like Bernie Sanders, a free education and we're going to pay off your student loans. A bailout, the government's going to bail out everybody's student loans is going to be the next running talking point. With what money? Your money. Your TJ Maxx dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I already had my degrees before that. I don't know. No, probably not. She asked if, if my if my degrees have helped me in business. I, I should have got a business degree. You know, if I'm going to do, be doing businesses, business? or the or the other thing to do is start off even better than a business degree is start off in a business in, in a, that that runs the way you want, and then have them teach you how to do it. Okay. Have them teach you how to do it. Yeah. If you grow up learning the business, that'll teach you way more than it. Because what happens? You get a business degree, and you go out in the real world, and someone's going to go, "Yeah, you got Burke smarts, but we got to get you in the trenches and see what it's like. It's a lot different to actually do it. Yeah. There's this uh, political cartoon that I saw once where it was like, uh, somewhere in the near future, and then it was, it was a bunch of people saying, does anybody need a doctor? And they were all doctors. Yeah. Yeah, is, anybody, is there a doctor in the room? And everyone raises their hand. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what, what you're saying is kind of like when you're learning a new language such as like Japanese or whatever, it's better to be like in Japan and learn yes, that that's right. for survival. That's a great example. That's a great example of, of the education versus learning or versus living and knowing it. How many people get an education and a degree? You do four years of Spanish. How many people speak Spanish after that? Zero. However, you move to Mexico and in one year you're fluent. It's the same thing in business and in any job. You can learn and study the job all you want, but the, where you really learn your job is when you do it. Yeah. In the, the old days, you, you, to be an attorney, you didn't have to go to law school. Right. To be, you didn't, uh, all those things, you didn't have to have education for anything. You went and you apprenticed. You went and had an apprentice, and an apprentice taught you the profession. That's the way it, you, you, had, you had mentors and apprentices you know, hundreds of years ago. Yes? Can you get work at Sanders in the past year? And then now I'm on the service desk. But I'm talking to my manager, and he said that going to the business would be a good idea for me because not only to learn the business, but I'm just going to the service desk with that background knowledge. So it's like going to the business with everything. Yeah. Yeah, learning, learning the education of anything helps you in several ways. One is the language. You learn the, you learn the phrases, the technology, the words, and how, you know, how it, uh, so that when you're there, you, you pick up on things quicker. That's absolutely true. But it doesn't substitute for, for the actual hands-on knowledge. OK, let's talk, about, let's talk about the other one, the media. So when we have media, we'll talk about the big media sources, right? We've got uh, alphabetically. We've got ABC. CBS. So, dang it, that's right. <laughs> CBS, I don't know, NBC. Fox, CNN, CBS, 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 PBS, MS, NBC, because I just needed more letters, right? <laughs> Telemundo. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that one. What else we got? Univision. That's a spell. Oh, Univision. What is Univision? Univision. Oh, Univision. <laughs> what else we got? Infowars. I don't know what Infowars is. Uh, what's Alex Jones? Yeah, Alex Jones. Oh, Alex Jones. So we've got we've got well we've got right talk radio. Yeah. yeah. Podcast. Oh. Yeah. Podcasts. Newspaper, uh, uh, not done. Okay, newspapers. So you've got, I don't know, the biggies. Uh, New York Times. LA Times. LA Times. Uh, right. Washington Post. Washington Post. Okay, I'm 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 done. I, that's a good list, right? 
So are these stations, you're, each of these stations, you're going to have two groups of people. And even the podcasts and the, and the newspapers, there's really two groups of people. You have a hard news. The boring news. And you've got opinion. Exciting. The opinion. You've got hard news and you've got opinion. The hard news is supposed to tell you unbiased what's going on. Yes. So one of my old uh, political tech teachers said that um, he used to hate to watch every single like basically everything that you put up there except CBS. But he doesn't like watching CBS because it's so boring and just like it's just evidence and like just hard to But it's like it's it's very it's unbiased. Bad. It's all biased. It, it's just biased. Well, he said it's, it's probably like one of the least biased. Based on his opinion, yeah. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. When you say least biased, based on based on where he is on the political spectrum, if he's here on the political spectrum, mm -hmm. yeah. and somebody does news like this, what is he going to think? Straight down the middle. They're not biased at all. If they do news like this, he's going to go, well, they lean a little left. If they do this, he's going to go, they lean a little right. But what about if I'm right here? What do I think? They're a little left. You see? It just depends on where you are on the political political you believe a new story. But we're going to talk about the bias in this real quick. So you've got the hard news, which is supposed to just give you unbiased news, and then you've got the opinion people in each of these. So you've got the op-ed pages, and you've got, you know, like Bill O'Reilly over at Fox, and you've got uh, uh, oh, what's his name over at MSNBC, uh, uh, Hardball, Chris Matthews, and you know these, those are opinion guys. They get up there and they, they, they right up front tell you, I'm biased and here's my opinion. Okay, that's fine. I respect the hell out of that. The hard news guys, when they're biased, I go, whoa, 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 wait a second. You're supposed to be unbiased, realizing that it's impossible to be unbiased. And here's why. Because the same thing with the history. There is an infinite amount of news that happens every day. And you've got to decide on three stories. Out of everything that happened today to every person on earth, tell me three things. And your goal is to get more viewers. Right? And your goal is to make money. So what are those three things got to be? They've got to be sexy and have bikini girls in it somehow. <laughs> it's got to have blood and guts in it somehow. Yeah. Right? It's got to be, yeah, it's got to bleed leads. So it's got to have some sex appeal cachet. And alcohol. And alcohol, yes. <laughs> so, the, so you see what we're dealing with as human beings. The sources of news that we have, that's what we're dealing with. What, what, a, what an, a biased person thinks is important. And, of course, what they think is important is different. Yeah, each person. So, you guys know what the left is and what the right is politically? The left and the right. Have you heard people talk about it? The left and the right. The left is, well, when you say liberal, we can talk about that later, but the, the left is, the left is yeah, typically Democrat, more liberal, you know, and the right, typically more conservative, Republican-minded. And we'll talk way more detail about this later. So you're going to have a bias in comparison to the average person, right? In comparison to the average person in America. Right? Which that doesn't exist, but we're going to say there is a person out there who's in the middle of the road on all this stuff. If that person in the middle of the road is here, where does NBC fall on the bias? Where does CBS fall on the bias? Where does NBC fall on the bias? <laughs> what? Where does Fox fall on the bias? Where does CNN fall on the bias? Where does PBS fall on the bias? Where does MSNBC fall on the bias? I don't watch it. Telemundo. Talk radio. Podcasts, it depends, right? You're going to find craziness on all sides of these things, but they're typically like this and like this, right? And everything in between. New York Times. LA Times. 
Washington Post. Yeah, they're pretty far left. There is, there are, there are two conservative papers. There's a few, but there's two like bigger ones that I know of. The Washington Times is one. Huffington. Anyway, I, we, but Huffington? I get it. well, Huffington, Huffington. You know what? Huffington used to be. It used to be very conservative, then it went very liberal, and now it, it bounces around. But um, what's his name? Uh, well, he's a, he's a uh, more of a pod guy. Um, uh, the guy that broke the Lewinsky and the um, what's his what's the, what's the Drudge, Drudge, Matt Drudge, the Drudge Report is another one. Okay, so <clears throat> what do you see up here? Oh, here's the other thing. Here's where we get our news that we shouldn't get our news from. Is um, who, who are the talk show guys? I want to say Leno and Letterman, but that's not anymore. Who is it? Oh, wait, uh, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon? Uh, who else? Conan. Conan? Yeah. Oh, and then what's it, what's what's Kimmel? Yeah, Kimmel. and then what's the, what's the black dude's name? Uh, uh, yeah, the British guy. He's on. He's on. Uh, he took over for John Stewart. Yes. Um, John Oliver? No. No. But John Oliver is the other one. John Oliver. Anyway, people people get their news from comedy shows. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. Please don't be that person. I, I talk to him all the time in my life. Because I watch, I used to watch John, John Stewart all the time. And I would, I would, you know, he's funny. He's horribly left, but he's funny. And I would watch it and I would talk to people and I'd go, I'd be talking to him and they would, I would hear them challenge me on different things and I'd go, oh, you heard John, you heard John Stewart. You're getting your news and your opinions from John Stewart. You realize he's a comedian. Kimmel's a comedian. Conan O'Brien is a comedian. They are not news sources. Please, as critical thinkers, do not get your opinions from comedians. They love to give their opinions. Ellen is not a, is not a news source. Right? You realize that? Oprah is not a news source. They are entertainers. Entertainers are not news sources either. We get our sometimes we get our opinions and news from 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 famous people, you know. <laughs> Matt Damien wants to tell you how to vote. Shut up, Matt Damien. Right? So that aside, and by the way, where and where, how do they go? Oh yeah. So, what do you see here? A lot of the news source that we get is left-leaning. Here's the one thing that's interesting about this. Of all these, what has the highest ratings? People by watching. That's right. I was just going to ask why. Why do these guys have higher ratings than anybody else? Because they have a lightning rod of people who don't want to listen to the rest of this stuff. That's, that's really what it is. People that go, ah, uh, and they find a home there. And so it's the only place, if you want to watch TV news, that you find solace from if you don't want to hear the other source. If you want to hear the other source, these guys have 100% of everybody who's like-minded, who want to, at least who want to hear like-minded news, and everybody else who wants to hear like-minded news is divided up amongst all of this, and so you're just sharing your, you know, you're sharing your, your, your uh, viewing audience. So. Talk about conservative, right? I'm sorry, talk about what? What do you mean talk about conservative? Well, I thought that was pretty conservative. Oh, you mean Fox News or the what? Or the well, the Republicans listen to one station, and then that's, uh, I think that's pretty conservative. Instead of playing their... Uh, oh, stuff. no, yeah, well, when you say conservative, I, it's, it's, it, it's, it's kind of, we, we find comfort zones. We all do it. We kind of find comfort zones. We find people that think like us, and we want to hear people echoing back what we think. It's not, it's not good or healthy to do that all the time. 
if you are if you are somebody who wants to get a balanced critical thinking view of the world, to watch Fox, you need to watch CNN, PBS, you need to watch all of them and see what's going on out there. So you get a more balanced as long as you understand this is what they are. You know when you watch CNN that you're going to get horribly biased news. As long as you understand that, you go, that's fine, but I want to hear the other side and how they, how they see the same topic. When you watch Fox, I want to know how they see the same topic. If you don't see the way the other side sees it, how can you be a good critical thinker? You can't. How many times have you been sitting there and listening to me and you go, damn, I never thought about it that way, right? That's healthy to think about things differently. It makes our country grow. We would stagnate if we all thought the same way. So I just point that out to you so you can kind of get a visual of what we're dealing with in the news media. Their job is to get you to watch just long enough to get an ad out there and to make some dough. Here's, it's impossible to hide the bias. Let's say three girls were shot, little kids were shot, some guy goes to shoot, some gang member goes to shoot another gang member, misses, and hits three little girls and kills them. There's, there's the event that happened, right? How do you tell that story? Do you say, do you say gang members gun down girl in the street? Do you say three girls slaughtered by, by gang members? Do you say black gang members shot? Do you say Mexican gang members sh shoot? Do you say white girls shot by black? Do you say black girls shot by white? Do you, do you see what I mean? How do you define it? And how you define it shows your bias. But you can't help but have to define it somehow. Do you say three girls shot? Or do you say three girls murdered in the streets? Three innocent children slaughtered. Is that true? Well, yeah, but do you see the bias you're creating by the words you choose? And there's a thousand words you can choose for every single definition, and the word you choose shows your, your bias. I'll give you an example. This morning, this morning I was watching a video, and it was a video of a guy that takes uh, it's a it's a security real life security camera video of a guy that um, mom drops him off. He's supposed to go to the detention center where he's supposed to check in. He's had a lot of problems in his life. He's an 18, 17, 18 year old kid who's in juvenile detention center. And mom drops him off and he's supposed to go into the detention center and he starts walking around and you can see he's acting all weird on the video and he sees a nice Lexus and he picks up a rock and he goes over to it and he throws the rock and it bounces off the window. And he goes and he gets the rock and he boom and it bounces off the window again. And he takes the rock and he goes boom and it bounces off the window again. And he's like, what the hell? And so then he goes bam and it smashes the window. And just then a guy walks out of the building who's watching him smash his car window. And the guy's got a gun in his hand. And the guy comes out and he says, hey, what are you? And he, you know, you can't, you don't hear. I'm projecting what I think he would say. You son of a bitch, what I don't know what he says, right? <laughs> what are you doing? Stop that, whatever he says to him. He confronts him. And the kid sees him and starts running at him. So the dude runs from the kid. He doesn't want to shoot the kid. He just wanted to scare him away, right? And so the kid runs and they run around the car and they're doing this sort of thing, you know? <laughs> and eventually the kid catches him and they start fighting over the gun. And as they're fighting over the gun, they go to the ground and the guy's going like this. And he, and he bam, and he shoots the kid twice in the chest, just as the mother comes back. She literally is pulling in as he's pulling the trigger, shooting her son, kills him. Sad story, right? Sad for the child, sad for the mother, sad for the guy that shot. I mean, no winners in this thing at all. The guy that shot the rest of his life is going to be, oh my gosh. The mother the rest of her life, oh my gosh. The kid, dead. <laughs> so there's a news story in the link so I clicked on the news story and I read the news story I just saw with my own eyeballs what happened and I read the news story the news story says there was a, a kid who was shot by this guy 
that the kid was uh, accused of trying to break in, you know, he allegedly was trying to break into the ve a vehicle. Not allegedly, it's, I, I, I can see it right there. He's taking a brick and smashing the window. It's not allegedly. He was breaking it, he broke into the car. Allegedly trying to break into the window. The man confronts him and shoots the guy in the chest. He's now being charged with murder. No, it could have been his business if it was his car. Yeah. Absolutely could have been his business. But if, oh, I don't know if it was. But even if it wasn't, is it your business to step into third party things? Possibly to stop crimes. Could he have used deadly force to stop a property crime? No. The law doesn't allow you to do that. But at the point the trigger was pulled, was he using deadly force to stop a property crime? No. Now they're fighting over the gun. It's now a sticky situation, right? This is the Trayvon Martin situation is what this becomes. And it, it gets, it legally gets a little stickier. Is a rock a deadly, deadly weapon? Yes, absolutely. So the guy did have a deadly weapon. Did he use it? I mean, these are all things that you look at. I'm not the prosecutor. I don't know, but I'm just saying. So, but when I, I read the story and I thought, this reporter has a bias. He left out everything that had to do with the kid breaking in, the kid chasing him around the car, the kid attacking him, and just cut to the man shot him. Is that what happened? Yes, the man shot him. But please place everything in the story. The person's bias was there. Did he lie about the story? No. He left out vital, important information that a critical thinker needs to hear to make a valid assessment of the facts, right? And so remember that when you're listening to these stories. They don't have to lie. They just have to leave something out. And they'll say, well, I had to. We only have a certain amount of time. I had to edit it somehow. And the person that wrote the story would say, I only have 500 words. I had to edit it somehow. And you get away with it. I'm sorry? Yeah, that's right. So let me just give you one story, and then I'll let you guys go on, on, the, on, the, on the media bias. By the way, what do we see right now? The lead story of every single station the Brett Kavanaugh and the people making the accusations. I guarantee if somebody, let's say one of you females, wrote an anonymous letter, or even put your name at the bottom and said, and said, uh, I, was raped, I was raped by, no, by one of the head senators, you know, Democratic senators, and you mailed it out there, I guarantee you, you're not going to get any news on that. Fox No. Even Fox wouldn't. You know why? Because it doesn't fit into the narrative right now. The narrative right now is people making accusations against Brett, against Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. And once the narrative is set, then everything needs to fit into the narrative. Uh -huh. So let me, let me give you an example of, of a situation. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like the Me Too movement. Nobody gave a crap about movie stars molesting each other or the men molesting the women. Nobody gave a crap about it. Everyone knew about it. Nobody cared until finally it became news. And then all of a sudden, everybody, now it's news. You too? You? And then you couldn't, you couldn't knock a door down and blow something up big enough for it. They go, who cares? No, that's not news. It is news. No, but it's not news until we say it's news. We'll let you know when it's important. It's always been important to me when I'm getting molested. Nah. Nah, not until we say it's important. Okay, now it's important. Really? They have to decide somehow, and they use their own bias. So, let me tell you a story. There was a guy who thought that he didn't, he didn't want President Obama to be the president, because he thought President Obama was going to be bad for the country. And he heard President Obama in one of his interviews talking about his background and his, his uh, experience. And somebody asked him, what's your experience? I mean, basically, you're, you came out of nowhere. What's your background? What's your experience to be the president? And he said, well, I was a state senator for two years. 
And uh, before that, I was a community organizer, at a volunteer community organizer. And they go, okay, wh with whom? And he said, a, a, an organization called ACORN. Anybody ever heard of ACORN? Yes. You have. By the way, they were here in Nevada, charged criminally, and people went to prison. And they, they were, they're, they're, a, they're an organization that's been around for quite some time. And they've kind of got a rocky past after this. They were, the so, they were the people that were assisting with the housing. Right. Yeah, they were assisting with a lot of stuff. They were getting signatures, they were forging signatures, and they were helping with a lot of things. So, but yeah, they're, they're a community organization. This is a good thing that is set up to do. Community organization outreach places are good. What they do is they allow people who don't have the education and experience to get access to things that they should have the ex edu education and experience to do, like taxes. What do I, how do I pay taxes? Well, let me tell you, here's how you can do it. And, and how do I sign up for, for benefits? I, I, I lost my job. Where do I go for, to get my unemployment for a while? How do I, my child's hungry. How do I get, how do I get food stamps? I don't know how to do that. And so they, they, they set up ways to allow people to have access to the things that are set up to help them. Great idea, wonderful if it's done right, right? We wanted, I, I think these people are doing a good job to the extent that they do what they're supposed to do. So that's who we worked for, ACORN. And so someone said, so this guy said, well, I'm going to take a look at these guys and see if they're a shady organization. So he went undercover. And he dressed up as a pimp. That's right. White dude dressed up as a pimp. And he did the whole cliched, big old hat, long robe, cane, like he's a like he's a, 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 what is it, a Halloween, you know, sort of costume. Dresses up like he's a pimp, and he gets his girlfriend to wear this skimpy halter top, skimpy skirt, and they go over to Acorn, and he puts in his hat a camera and a mic. And he goes into Acorn, and he says, yeah, I need to talk to somebody to help me with some tax stuff and some business stuff. And they say, okay, just a minute, let me see if I can help you. And they bring somebody in, they say, this is who you can talk to. He goes in, he says, yes, here's the situation. Um, I've got, I'm a business person who, uh, I, 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 have a prost I, I have prostitutes. I have several girls that work for me. Um, and I need some help with this. What I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on bringing up about 10 or 15 teenagers, 13 to, to 16 year old girls from South America and I'm going to bring them up to the United States and I want them to work for me. So I need help with this. I need to make sure that I can get them to sign up for benefits, welfare. Can I claim them as dependents and get tax credits for them? And how do I set this up? Should I set this up as like a corporation or an LLC? Or how do I do this? And the lady goes, okay, here's what you do. And she explains how to do everything. And he's got it all on film. And he's sitting there going, you've got to be kidding me. And she explains the whole thing. He goes, okay, thank you. He walks out and he goes, oh my gosh, I got all that on film. And he goes, that's got to be just a one out of a million. So he goes to another, goes to Atlanta, does it there. Same thing. Goes to LA, same thing. Goes to New York, same thing. All the acorn places, everyone he goes to, the same thing happens with this little undercover sting thing he does. He takes all the footage together and he makes copies and he gives it to every single one of the news agencies out there. And he says, President Candidate Obama says his only experience is he worked for ACORN. This is what ACORN does. Hmm. And he gives them the footage. Technically they're doing and, the job. No, they're committing felonies. Mm -hmm. They're aiding and abetting uh, it's not federal crimes. It is their job to report it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. Wasn't committed though, right? They're I'm sorry. Because they're, they're imposters. Uh, well, not imposters, but they're they're putting off an act. So would it actually be a crime? No, no, it wouldn't actually be a crime. No, no, no. No. Yeah. You know, if you gave it to the police, the police, the police. Well, the police might then follow up and say, you know. What's going on here? Uh, it, but it, it, you know, it may be a crime. I don't know. That, that, it may be a crime to even do that. I, I don't know. That's not my area of federal law. So it could be a crime to even attempt to do that. You know, because attempted child smuggling is probably a crime that clearly was an attempt to do that. So I don't know. But 
did how many people saw that all over the news? <laughs> oh, trust me, you would have seen it on the news. Why didn't you see it on the news? Because every single news editor that got that said, that's not news. That's not important. That's not what's, you know what's news? Is we're going to have the first black president. That's news. You see, the bias makes a difference. And so, could you imagine if the other thing, if it were the other way around? If, let's say, somebody from the left went into NRA and they said, you know those NRA sons of bitches? I think they're doing shady stuff. And they put a fake cap on and went in dressed as a hillbilly with, <laughs> with suspenders and, uh, and a camouflage cap with a camera in it and a little bit of chewing tobacco and a straw hanging out of his mouth and he goes, hey, I just want, how you doing? And dad had a little silly accent and they say, hey, how you doing? He says, hey, listen, I've got this, this uh, AK that's a semi-automatic. From what I understand, you can make this automatic. Can you help me with this? And the guy goes, oh, um, yeah, all you have to do is uh, you flip this back, you file this down, and then you just take that part out, and then, and then, it, and then it's automatic. And, and what did you want to do with that? Well, I want to go shoot up a black church. Oh, okay. Well, you have a good day. <laughs> and then he went to the next NRA place, and they did that, and they put footage of 10 different NRA places doing the same thing, and he released that to the media. What would have happened? Literally, every television would have exploded, right? Yeah. Boom! <laughs> yeah. You see the difference? Yeah. Why is that? I saw the story. How do I know the story? I saw it when I was flipping around, and guess where I saw that story? The only place that I saw that story. The Obama one saw the, Ob the Obama one. Yeah. So I, I, I say that just because you got to understand what's going on out there. Please take a look at alternative news sources. Take a look at alternative news sources. Whatever your bias is, bounce around. PBS tries to be boring as hell, but they try to be in neutral. There's places that try to do this. Get your news from multiple sources so you don't say, when a professor says to you, remember that story about the guy who taped Acorn? You go, what? You go, oh yeah, I remember that story. <laughs> right? Be informed. Yeah. Have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>